Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young, his father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, the coffee that's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. You remember Sally in our alley, don't you? Remember how it begins? Of all the days that's in the week, I dearly love but one day. And that's the day that comes betwixt a Saturday and Monday. Yes, Sunday is a wonderful day. A day for worship and rest and relaxation. Or a day to catch up on all those little jobs that have to be done around the house. That's the way it is with the Andersons at any rate. In the white frame house on Maple Street, almost anything is liable to happen on Sunday. And generally does. Like this. <sighs> well, that was the best dinner I've had in years. Thank you, dear. Yes, sir, a wonderful dinner. Mom sure knows how to dish up the groceries, doesn't she, Dad? She certainly does. Best little cook on this side of the street. My, such flattery. Well, don't forget, it's a short street. <laughs> now I'm crushed, but literally crushed. Why doesn't somebody say something I can understand? Nobody's supposed to understand it, Pigeon Puss. That makes it fun. Oh. Grown-ups sure play dopey games, don't they? That'll be enough out of you, Kathleen. But golly, if nobody's supposed to understand... Drink your milk. But, Daddy... Stop arguing and drink your milk. I already drank it. Oh. Well, behave yourself. Yes, Daddy. May I have another cup of coffee, please? I think it can be arranged. There you are, dear. Thank you. You know, this is the kind of a day that puts life into a man. May I have the cream and sugar, please? Here you are, Father. Thank you, Betty. Yes, sir. Brisk and cold and clear. Makes you want to get out and do things. Doesn't it, Bud? Hmm? Oh, sure. You bet. The crisp autumn air, that's what does it. Stirs up a man's blood. Makes him want to get out and do things. You said that before. I did? Well, what of it? If I want to say things two or three times... Margaret, what are you doing? Uh, just a second, dear. I'm almost finished. With what? There. Now, what were you saying, Jim? I said, what were you doing? I was making a list, that's all. What kind of a list? Oh, just an ordinary list for a man who wants to get out and do things. Uh. <laughs> now, that's fine. Well, uh... Let's see now. The storm windows have to be taken out and hung, remember, dear? You were going to do that last Sunday. By George, you're right. I was, wasn't I? Then there's that faucet in the kitchen. It needs a new washer. Haven't I fixed that yet? No, dear, you haven't. You haven't fixed the catch on the back door, either. Never mind. <laughs> Tell her to drink her milk. <laughs> you mind your own business. Then there's the hose connection on the washing machine and the light socket in the laundry. Uh, pardon me, may I be excused? I just thought of something. Go ahead, dear. Excuse me. Why is it you always remember something the minute anybody mentions work? Uh, drink your milk. <laughs> Father. Well, as long as I'm not needed around here... Jim, I haven't finished the list. That's fine, honey. You go ahead and finish it. And in the meantime, I'll uh, go into the den and take a nap. But, Jim, these things have got to be done. I know. Just put them all down on the list and I'll take care of them later. Of all the lazy... I am not lazy. I'm conserving my strength, that's all. Uh, call me in about an hour, will you? All right, Samson. Hmm. Man gets one day a week to take it easy, and what happens? Washers and storm windows. Get tired just thinking about it. Shouldn't work on Sunday anyway. Just spread out and... Oh, it feels good. Oh, boy, I don't know why I eat so much. One of these days, I'm going to have to cut down. I don't know. The second I decide... Bud! Bud! He's upstairs, Daddy. Well, tell him to stop it. Stop it, Bud! I told him, Daddy. 
Thank you. All I have to do is stretch out, and that's a signal for... Bud! Bud! So help me, I'll go up there and fix him like he's never been fixed before. Any time he thinks... Kathy, what are you doing? Did you say something, Daddy? I said, what are you doing? I'm playing jacks. With a baseball? <laughs> well, I lost the other one. Now give it to me. What? Give me the baseball. Yes, Daddy. Now, go into the kitchen and help your mother. But... Kathy? Yes, Daddy. And tell everybody I don't want to hear another sound around here for the next hour. Okay, Daddy, I'll tell them. Everybody else gets to take a nap. Why shouldn't I? You'd think it was such a big thing. It isn't going to snow for weeks. Why all the rush about storm windows? Uh, oh, that's more like it. Oh, no. I'll get it. But, but! Uh, <laughs> what's the use? You might as well try to sleep in the middle of a bowling alley. Betty, it's for you. Bud, stop making so much noise. Did you call me, Dad? Yes. Will you please stop making so much noise? Okay, Dad, you bet. <laughs> Good grief. If it isn't one thing, it's two things. Hello? Oh, hello, Janie. What? He didn't. Oh, Janie, how wonderful. How simply catish. Betty. When did he find out? He did? Betty. Oh, what a thrill. Janie, you didn't. <laughs> that does it. That does it. Oh, Janie, you kill me. <laughs> Betty, give me that phone. But, Father, I was talking Give to... me the phone. Jumping creepers. Hello, Janie. I have a message for you from Betty. Goodbye. <laughs> Janie was right in the middle. I know. She's been right in the middle for years. <laughs> now, go in and help your mother. Jumping creepers. You'd think I was a child. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder if it's worth it. Or if anything's worth it. I wouldn't care if I did it every day, but the first time I... No, not that. Margaret! Margaret! Sorry, Angel. I wanted to clean up in the dining room and I forgot all about your nap. I'll do it later. You're sure it won't put you out? <laughs> oh, no. I've got lots of other things to do. Well, that's fine. I'll see you later. Have a nice nap. Thank you. This is getting ridiculous. There hasn't been this much noise in Springfield since the brewery exploded. <laughs> <laughs> but any time I... That's the last straw. That's... Bud! 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 All right. This time he's going just a little too far. I'll show him that when I say I'm going to take a nap, I'm going to take a nap. Bud! Stop it! Oh, hiya, Dad. Have a nice nap? I... <laughs> Bud, is this the only time you can find to practice... I wasn't practicing. I see. The trombone was playing all by itself. Oh, no. I was playing it. But you weren't practicing. No, sir. Bud, stick out your tongue. There isn't anything wrong with me, Dad. I was making up a song. What for? Oh, gosh. If William Saroyan can get $20,000 for a come on to my house... $20,000? <laughs> sure, and that's only the beginning. For come on to my house? That's right. Stick out your tongue. He did, Dad. Tom Lewis told me. Bud, do you realize how much money $20,000 is? Before or after taxes. <laughs> Anytime. Why, I'd have to sell almost a million dollars worth of insurance to make $20,000. Maybe you're in the wrong business. I'm beginning to think so. $20,000. And that's nothing. Even if it was 10 pay life, I'd have to sell $20,000. Thousand dollars. Did you ever hear of Stanley Sales? No. He made over two hundred thousand dollars on Side Saddle Sadie. But he did, Dad. I never even heard of it. Nobody did. But it was on the other side of Yes, We Have No Bananas. <laughs> well, 
And he made $200,000? He sure did. Tom Lewis told me. Wait a minute. Who is Tom Lewis? He's a new fellow in town, and I met him when he was watching football practice. But if you're going to believe everything the boys tell you... He isn't a boy, Dad. He's almost 22, and he just got out of college, and he knows all about the music business. And he told you $200,000? He even said he'd help me if I'd write a song. So I told him I would, and he's coming over here at four o'clock, and... Bud, you're not going to play that song for him, are you? Well, I don't seem to do so good with the music. I can think of wonderful words, but... Do you suppose the music of a song is very important? Well, of course it's important. Why, if you don't have a catchy tune, nobody will ever hear the words. Well, look, Dad... Uh, Just a minute, Bud. Margaret! Margaret! Jim, I've got to clean the dining room rug. I know, but... Haven't you finished your nap yet? I'm not going to take a nap, but we still need a little quiet. Bud and I are going to write a song. I wonder why it is that only Maxwell House coffee has that good-to-the-last-drop flavor. There's a mighty good reason, ma'am. The fact is, our Maxwell House is three times richer in flavor coffees than hundreds of other brands, ten to twelve times richer than some. Experts, you see, classify all the coffees grown in this world into just two groups. Filler coffees, which add lots of bulk but little flavor, and the much rarer flavor coffees, which add real zest and richness to a blend. Now, Maxwell House buys more flavor coffees than anyone else in the whole world. And Maxwell House is three times richer in these fine flavor coffees than hundreds of other brands, ten to twelve times richer than some. And it is these superb flavor coffees, plus the one and only Maxwell House technique of blending and roasting, which explains why Maxwell House alone has that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor. My family has always loved Maxwell House best. Then they're in good company, ma'am, for more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House coffee than any other brand at any price. Well, no wonder. It's three times richer. Three times richer in choice flavor coffees. Right you are. That's why Maxwell House is the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. It's four o'clock in Springfield, and for the Andersons, the zero hour is close at hand. Tom Lewis, the young man who knows all about the music business, will arrive at any moment. And then, well, Cole Porter, look out. The great American song is finished, and a meteoric career for two new songwriters is about to be launched. Like this. Father, do we have to go through it again? Don't you want your mother to hear it? Why? What did she ever do to me? (laughs) I think it's beautiful, Daddy. Well, I don't know about that, but it certainly stacks up with some of the things I've heard lately. We'd better get ready, Dad. Mom says she'll be right in. Good. Now, remember, Betty, it's the same tempo all the way through, but when we get down here... Excuse me, Dad, Hmm? but wouldn't it be a good idea if Kathy went outside and watched for Mr. Lewis? All right, Kathy, go ahead. Betty, when we get down here... How can I sing if I'm outside? You can sing it later. Go ahead, Noodle Nose. (laughs) Gee whiz. When we get down here... Why does she have to go outside? Just because Bud meets some dizzy character. He isn't a dizzy character. He's a very nice guy. I'll bet. Well, he is. Kathy, will you please do as you're told? Go outside and warn us if you see Mr. Lewis. But I don't know what he looks like. He's got a yellow convertible. He has? With a black top. Father, I've got to go upstairs and change my dress. There's nothing wrong with the one you've got on. Look, when you get down here... But it's awful, Father. I look horrible. You look fine. When you get down here... Kathy, will you please go outside and watch? But you said... Go ahead, Kathy, or we won't let you sing. Daddy! Go ahead, kitten. Gee whiz, just because I'm the littlest one in the family, everybody thinks they can push me around. Wait till I get to be a lady wrestler. I'll show you. (laughs) Look, Betty, when you get down here... Did I hear?
there someone at the front door, Jim? Oh, it's okay, Mom. Kathy went out. Betty... Isn't it wonderful, Mother? Mr. Lewis has a yellow convertible. With a black top. That's very nice. Uh, sit down, honey. We'll be ready in two seconds. Betty, when you get down here... You want a big finish. I want a... Uh, yes. Well, are we ready? All set, Dad. Good. Now remember, Margaret, we want an honest opinion. All right, dear. Okay. Here we go. One, a two... Pretty good, didn't it, Dad? Uh, we're still a little rough on the finish. <laughs> what do you think, Margaret? It uh, didn't sound any rougher than the rest of it. <laughs> well, I suppose I'm too much of a perfectionist. Oh, brother. What was that? I said, what did you think of it, Mother? <laughs> oh, well, I... Uh, Be honest now. I... I think it's very nice, but, um... But what? Well, it, uh, seems a little familiar. Honey... It does, Jim. I get the feeling that I've heard it before. Well, naturally, we've been practicing it for an hour. <laughs> you should have heard it in the beginning. <laughs> that isn't what I mean. There's something by Stephen Foster. Margaret, there are only eight notes in the scale. Naturally, we're going to use the same notes somebody else did. There aren't any others. Betty, play the beginning of Beautiful Dreamer. Okay. That's enough. Now, uh, play ours. <laughs> now, you see, it's nothing like it. <laughs> and besides, you haven't even heard Bud's lyrics. I'm sorry, Jim, but, well... Maybe I'm wrong. Well, that's the trouble with people. It's so easy to say you don't like something or it sounds like something else. Jim, I didn't Did say... Did they tell George Gershwin his song sounded like something else? Did they discourage Jerome Kern? They did not. But, Jim... How about Irving Berlin? I'm Always Chasing Rainbows was lifted right out of Chopin's fantasy impromptu. And he gets paid. Jim, I didn't say... And how about Yes, We Have No Bananas? That sounds like a dozen songs. Yeah, and how about Side Saddle Sadie? Who? That was on the other side. <laughs> of what? $200,000 because it was on the other side of Yes, We Have No Bananas. And you want to discourage me. I don't, dear. I merely said... I suppose you want me to spend the rest of my life in the insurance business. You've always liked the insurance business. I can work 48 hours a day for 90 years and I won't make that kind of money. I know, dear, but... But and I knock this song out in... Less than an hour. Why, we can write a dozen like it in one day and then take the rest of the year off. Jim. One day a year. That's the kind of a job I've been looking for all my life. <laughs> it's a good thing I thought of it, huh, Dad? Jim, before you burn the insurance business behind you, why don't you ask Mr. Lewis... He's here! He just drove up! My hair, it's a mess! It looks fine, but don't stand there holding your trombone. Why not? Put it down on the piano. Make it look casual. How can you make a trombone look casual? <laughs> Put it down. Jim, doesn't he know you're going to play your song? Of course, but we don't want to hit him over the head with it. We're going to lead up to it gradually. If you'd only told me about the convertible. We'll steer the conversation around to a general discussion of music, and then very casually... He's here! Bud, get out there and meet him. Okay. And be casual. Okay. Jim. Just a second, honey. Betty, um, you sit over here. My lipstick. I'll bet I haven't got a drop on. Oh, that's it. Now, I'll sort of be standing over here. Why don't you hold a polo mallet? <laughs> That'd make a nice effect. Margaret, please. Hiya, Mr. Lewis. Hello, Bud. 
I'm Kathy. Hello, Kathy. You're a big girl, aren't you? I can sing, too. Father. Would you like to hear... Uh, don't stand out there in the hall, bud. Bring Mr. Lewis in. Okay. Father, she's going to ruin everything. No, she won't. Well, Mr. Lewis, come right in. This is a very great pleasure. Thank you, sir. This is Tom Lewis, Dad. Bud's told us all about you. <laughs> well... And this is my mother. How do you do? Oh, hello, Mrs. Anderson. Bud didn't tell me you had such an attractive family. Mr. Lewis, would you like to hear... Uh, we understand you're quite new in Springfield, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> yes, I've only been here a few days. <clears throat> well, it might seem a little strange at first, but you'll get used to it. Springfield's a pretty fine little town, isn't it, honey? We like it. I certainly like what I've seen of it. <laughs> Cut it out, will you, Patty? Bud. Well, stop pulling my coat. Father. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Lewis, this is our older daughter, Betty. How do you do? I'm doing much better now. <laughs> when are we going to sing the song? Kathy. Holy cow, Dad. Mr. Lewis, I... Well... Isn't that what he's here for? Kathleen, be quiet. But isn't he? Kathy, one more word and you go to bed. Gee whiz. Mr. Lewis, I... I don't know what to say. I don't either. You see... But as long as Kathy's dumped our cards on the table, so to speak, we might as well do it. Mr. Anderson, I'd like to tell you... Why I... don't you sit right there with Mrs. Anderson and uh, we'll go to work. But... Uh... Are we going to do it now? Yes, we're going to do it now. <laughs> Good. It won't last very long, Mr. Lewis. But they don't under... Holy catfish. <sighs> we'll be ready to go in just about two seconds. I'm ready to go now. Uh, stand over here, Kathy. Yes, Daddy. We figured that in view of the modern trend, we ought to point the lyric toward... Jim. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, are we all set? You bet, Dad. All right. A one, a two... <laughs> Father! I'm sorry. The reed must have come loose or something. <laughs> Just give it a few little... Uh... There, that's better. Now, from the beginning, are you ready? Let's go. A one, a two... Go back to your house. Stay away from mine. Why should I worry about a clinging vine? Go back to your house and write yourself a letter. Maybe I'm not so hot, but baby, you're no better. <laughs> Every June there's a great big moon, and I'm the one who knows it. So why should I sit inside when I don't care and my heart chose it? Go back to your house. Stay away from mine Caroline, you cling and vine I've got no use for love Oh, hear me sing it I've got no use for love Say, that was fine, it really was It was? We only practiced it for two hours, too. Well, it's still a little rough, but uh, what do you think? Well, uh, how much do you think we can sell it for? But that isn't the right approach. If Mr. Lewis... Mr. Anderson, I'm going to put my cards on the table, too. You're... What do you mean? Well, uh, look, I'm a stranger in Springfield, and I figured if I could make a few contacts... Father... Just a minute, Betty. Go ahead, Mr. Lewis. Well... I was talking to Bud, and he seemed to be interested in music, and he was such a nice kid, and, well, the whole thing was a gimmick. A gimmick? That's right. I, I wanted to meet a family and maybe get some leads, but, gosh, you've been so nice about the whole thing, I feel like a heel. And I didn't know he was really going to write a song. Wait a minute. You mean you don't know anything about the music business? Gosh, No. I sell insurance. <laughs> oh, no!
If you count on the flavor of rich, downright good coffee to help brighten your day, it will pay you to remember one important fact. Maxwell House is three times richer in flavor coffees than hundreds of other brands. Flavor coffees, you know, are the extra-choice premium varieties, the ones that give real, full-bodied richness to a blend. And Maxwell House is three times richer in these fine flavor coffees than hundreds of other brands. What's more, these superb flavor coffees are carefully blended and roasted with traditional skills that belong to Maxwell House alone. So it's no wonder only Maxwell House has that good-to-the-last-drop flavor. For rich, truly satisfying coffee, then, coffee you enjoy cup after cup, take home a pound of our Maxwell House. It's the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. A dozen breakfast times have gone by in the white frame house on Maple Street. And the Andersons are gathered in the breakfast nook for participation in their favorite meal. Bud is out getting the mail, Jim is still in the insurance business, and the ill-fated musical interlude is almost a thing of the past. Almost, we said, but not entirely. Like this. Dad, I got an answer. Dad! Just a minute, Bud. You don't have to shout. But they wrote to me. Who did? What's he talking about? See, I got a letter. Bud, will you please calm down? What's so wonderful about a letter? I suppose you get letters from music publishers, huh? Music Bud, did you send that horrible thing? It's horrible, huh? Well, they happen to be interested in it. No. Daddy! Let me see that letter. Jim, they couldn't be. Could they? I don't know. Uh, Dear Mr. Anderson... We have received the song you so kindly sent us. It's down near the bottom, Dad. Oh. Uh, Unfortunately, we find the lyrics too radical and daring. Jim, they're joking. Honey, let me finish, please. We are, however, definitely interested in the music. Hurry! I don't believe it. We will keep your score on file, and in the event that we decide to use it, we'll send the check directly to Stephen Foster. More coffee, dear? Thank you very much, yeah. Hey, good looking, what's cooking? Coconut cream pie. See? Gosh, it looks beautiful. Something new? Yes, sir. It's the new Jell-O coconut cream pudding and pie filling. Hard to make? No, sir. With Jell-O coconut cream pudding and pie filling, it takes about five minutes. Mm, how about the coconut? Lots of snowy shredded coconut right in the mix. And nothing to add but milk. Well, sounds like Jell-O coconut cream pudding and pie filling for red letter desserts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in this time of world crisis and stress, religious institutions play a more important role than ever in our American way of life. So attend and support your church or synagogue. Take someone to church this week. You'll both be richer for it. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, Robert Cole, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Today is the silver anniversary of NBC.